across the saddle from Hilo to Kona. This was the slogan for the many proposals to build a road connecting the two sides of the island. Stories of ghosts, strange lights, and mysterious happenings abound on this 52-mile stretch of land. Today on Hawaii's Most Haunted, we travel to Saddle Road on the Big Island. Beyond the cool waters and trade winds of our idealistic paradise is the thin veil that separates our world from the place where the shadows talk back. Welcome to Hawaii's Most Haunted. In the 1850s, there were efforts to build the Macy Trail, a road that would connect the Hilo side of Hawaii Island to the Kona side. The trail moved up the slopes of Mauna Kea until one day in 1855, a stream of lava from Mauna Loa enveloped it. The Hawaiians working on the project refused to continue working on the road, believing they had offended Pele. Around the same time, the road to connect the Kona side to the Hilo side that Jared P. Judd began building in 1949 was making slow progress. Work on what became known as the Judd Trail is said to have ended when the 1859 flow from Mauna Loa cut it off. Using prison labor, only about 12 miles was completed after 10 years of construction. Again, it was believed that the lava flow was sent by Pele because she was offended that the road was being built. The original Judd Trail ended about 28 miles from Kailua. Those who have traveled the path said that it did not zigzag, nor did it follow the contour of the hills. The road went straight up the mountain, changing its course only when a cone or a cliff compelled the builders to detour. After the 1859 eruption, efforts to build a road across the center of the island were essentially abandoned. Additional discussions about the road over the years were met with resistance from the residents of Hawaii Island. One person in 1915 stated, I think that the money that might be expended on such a project had far better be spent on the existing roads and making them decent and safe. Spend the money on Front Street, the Volcano Road, the present horrible patches of the Belt Road, and on the homestead roads that are so badly needed on this island. Aside from the exorbitant costs of the new road, Many still believed it would be an affront to Pele, who'd already made her stance known when she destroyed both attempts at building a road across her land. In 1935, there was a renewed interest in connecting Hilo to Kona. The Belt Road that ran around the circumference of the Big Island was approximately 200 miles. A road across the saddle of the island would be less than 70 miles. So even a round trip from Hilo to Kona and back again would be significantly shorter than traveling the belt. In 1943, following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. Army built an access road across Kumu'ula Plateau. But because it wasn't meant for civilian travel, it was a simple gravel path built in case of foreign invasion. After the war ended in 1945, the Army turned the road over to the territory of Hawaii. With little government funding to maintain the road, prison labor was again used to create a more direct route from Hilo to Kona. Despite the rough state of the saddle road, travelers found it convenient when they needed to go to and from Hilo or Kona. Even before paving, the road had its share of trouble. Later improvements and more traffic meant an increase in strange incidents and odd occurrences. In February of 1955, these weird events were well documented in the local newspapers. After spending the weekend with relatives in Hilo, a family of four set to make their way home to Waikiki. Their 1935 Ford pickup had a broken window on the passenger's side, so the husband folded a tarpaulin several times and closed the door on it to keep the cold air out while they traveled. The family reported that the night was clear with no wind. They were driving at a normal speed climbing the steady incline of the saddle road. Suddenly, what appeared to be sharp gusts of wind began to push the tarpaulin inwards. The wife tried to push the tarp out, but some kind of force pushed her hand back. 
This happened a few times before she asked for her husband to help her. When he tried, he was unable to do so and said he felt a solid weight outside that couldn't possibly be the wind. Suddenly, there came a tapping sound that began on the roof of the truck. The family said that the tapping seemed to move about the vehicle, even to the front on the hood. The husband said that he knows people will think that the tapping was from the flaps of the tarp hitting the outside of the truck, but that was impossible. He was sure to tuck all corners of the tarp securely around the frame of the door before closing it tightly. Frightened, he stopped the truck and all four of them could feel a force rocking the truck back and forth, nearly tipping it, even though they were immobile. The man turned the truck around and traveled about 350 feet back the way they came, when suddenly two lights appeared in front of them. At first, they thought the lights were from the vehicle some distance away, until they disappeared. The family didn't pass any vehicle, and there were no crossroads in the area onto which a vehicle would have to be able to turn. As they traveled back toward Hilo, two red lights appeared. They thought it was the taillights from another vehicle, so the husband sped up a little to try and catch up. But those red lights disappeared too. The road was straight with no crossroads, and he swears it was not the case of a vehicle that outdistanced him. All this time, the tapping continued. At the Country Club Road, they ran out of gas and coasted down into Hilo to the federal building where they parked under a street lamp. Using a gas can from the back of the truck, the man filled his tank and then headed to their relative's home. When they got to the house, the husband and son got out of the truck, but some kind of force was holding the wife and daughter inside. Try as they might, the man couldn't pull them out. The husband rushed into the house, grabbed a handful of salt and threw it into the vehicle, thus releasing the girls. Just over a week later, in February, five school and county officials were returning to Hilo from a meeting in Kona and decided to travel the Saddle Road. Riding in two cars, they compared notes afterward, confirming their separate impressions. They saw two yellowish-red lights glowing dully. The lights did not project a beam like the headlights of a vehicle would. The lights, spaced on an even horizontal plane, came from an area containing no buildings, airport installations, or side roads. They ruled out a reflection because of the constant unchanging glow. After a while, one light went out. Then, after a pause, the other disappeared as well. The next incident involves a taxi driver just before midnight, about 10 miles down from Humu'ula. The cabbie stopped to fix a flat tire. After jacking up the back of his cab, the man removed the lug nuts and flat tire. He then removed the spare tire from the back, dropping the lug wrench on the floor of the trunk. I put the tire on the wheel and tightened the nuts when I heard a noise on the right side, he said. I see the wrench. I stand up one time and look around. Nobody there, and I'm scared. But I say thank you very much. I put on the lug nuts a little bit and look around. Seeing no one is around, he closed his trunk, jumped in the taxi, and hightailed it back to Hilo. The taxi driver explained that he knows he deliberately left the wrench on the floor of his trunk, so it could not have fallen out. Besides, he explained, even if it did fall, it couldn't have dropped to the point near his feet where it landed several feet away from the rear of the car. Not long after that, another phenomena occurred again on Saddle Road. One morning, a couple visiting from Boston rented a car and started out on the saddle road traveling from Hilo to Kona. As they traveled on a downgrade, the man pulled over, turned off the motor, and got out to take a picture. When he got back in his car, he put the car in neutral and left off the brake. Suddenly, the car started to roll backwards, up the hill. Startled, the man stepped on the brake. A second later, he tried again slowly releasing the brake and again, the car started to roll back uphill. With the hair on the back of his neck standing up, he and his wife decided to turn right around and head back to Hilo, canceling their plan to visit Kona. A lot of people began to believe that all of these events meant that Pele was restless, 
they could soon expect the volcano to erupt. Peleho Nuamea journeyed from her home in the South Pacific in search of a new home for herself and her family. Along the way, she digs up pits of fire with her mighty o'o, or spade. But each time the flames were peeled out by the waters of her elder sister, Namako Kahai, the goddess of the ocean. They finally came head to head on the island of Maui, where Pele was defeated by the goddess, and her bones were scattered in a location known as Kaivio Pele, the bones of Pele. However, her family deified her remains, and she became the goddess Pele as we now know her today. From ancient times until now, people have continually passed down their own first-hand accounts of encountering Pele in her guise as a wrinkled old woman or a beautiful young girl. They also believe that when Pele is restless, she will cause strange things to happen, letting her people know that she will be visiting soon. And interestingly enough, she did. On February 28th, 1955, Approximately one month after the strange events began, lava emerged along fissures in the forests of the Big Island. The eruption lasted for 88 days. 21 homes were destroyed, and 3,900 acres of Hawaii Island were covered by new lava. But an eruption didn't mean that the weird events on Saddle Road stopped. Quite the contrary. In 1974, a man decided to take a leisurely drive to Kona. Before he left, he noticed that the Puhakuloa Plateau ahead was cloudless. Being part Hawaiian, the man felt this was a good sign and started out around 6 p.m. He was alone on this trip, driving his car that was less than a year old. Hawaii's gods, for their own reasons, let the unsuspecting driver continue without incident as he climbed steadily toward the 6,000-foot elevation. No outward signs or inattentions told the man that this was a couple evening on the saddle road. The unsuspecting traveler just happened to choose Pokane, a sacred night to cross the center of the island. This was the night of Kane, when supernatural beings were wandering about in the dark. It was a night when mortals were not welcome. He imagined that a kapuali'i or an akua must have traversed this area in some bygone age. For what happened next, he had no other explanation for. As he drove along the isolated, narrow, winding road, he admired the beauty of the approaching night, the way the shadows landed on the frozen seas of black lava. Suddenly, he noticed smoke bellowing out from his car. Stopping on the side of the road, an inspection of his vehicle showed a cut as if made by a knife across the bottom of his crankcase. Oil from the cut sprayed on the exhaust pipe, creating clouds of smoke behind his car. Luckily, the man was not far from the military camp and the state ranger cabin. Fog had drifted in by the time the man reached the military gate. Floodlights made the entrance area an isolated island of whiteness. But no one was about. Perhaps too late, the man's na'au, his gut feeling, told him that maybe he shouldn't be out and about on this night. After finding the gate deserted, the man made his way to the ranger cabin. Although the ranger was not Hawaiian, he said that even he knew that this was a night to remain inside. Asking no questions, the ranger gave the man six cans of motor oil, all he had. Headed back to Hilo, the man stopped every few miles to replace the oil that was leaking from his crankcase. He tossed the can into the fog, and it was inexplicably tossed back. Knowing there was nothing out there but barren lava, he knew it hadn't bounced off a tree. Now, he was mostly coasting downward toward Hilo, when a huge shape came into the range of his headlights. His imagination told him that it may have looked like a giant bird or a giant lizard. Whatever it was, it stood right in the middle of the road, causing him to swerve to the right in an attempt to avoid it. But the attempt was futile. As the car grazed the monster from the left front fender to the rear, he stopped and searched for the creature, whatever it was. When he noticed that his rear view mirror had been knocked off, and there were dents all along the left side of the car. As the fog began to lift, he looked around for his mirror and the creature. and even drove it back a bit, but was unable to find anything. He decided to leave everything behind and return to Hilo without further incident, only stopping long enough to add the last three cans of oil. 
The next tale of mystery involves a group of soldiers whose platoon was sent from Oahu to the Puhakuloa training area for an annual week-long training exercise. After their arrival, four men were sent to Hilo on an errand. Having completed their task, they were returning to camp, traveling on the saddle road. Suddenly, as the story goes, a large wild pig sped across the road right in front of their jeep. The driver had no time to swerve safely and ended up killing the pig with the vehicle. The young men were excited at the thought of having fresh meat for dinner in place of the usual variety of sea rations that awaited them. They loaded the pig into the jeep and continued on their way to the training area. Suddenly, the vehicle quit running. It didn't sputter or run out of gas. The engine just turned off. Coasting to a stop on the side of the road, the men jumped out and lifted the hood in an attempt to figure out the problem, but they could find nothing wrong. They tried starting the Jeep, but it wouldn't crank. One man of Hawaiian descent looked at the pig and wondered out loud if the pig was the reason they couldn't go forward into Pele's territory. The other Hawaiian in the group agreed that they probably broke an ancient kapu. The men moved the pig from the back of the Jeep and set it on the side of the road offering apologies to unseen gods. The driver turned on the ignition and the vehicle started immediately. Now spooked, the men jumped in and headed back to the training area. On the way back, all four men rode in silent contemplation, their previous jovial attitudes left behind with the pig that they ran over. These are just a few events that have occurred on Hawaii's Saddle Road and the strange incidents continue to this day. Next time you're out and traveling that dark road at night, use caution and pay close attention to what's around you.